Hello and thank you for tuning in to Faith Encounter Ministries broadcast. I am your host, Evangelist Marjorie Clark. I thank God that all of you have taken out the time to tune into this broadcast on whatever device you are using, your laptop, your phone, your desktop, your television, whatever device. I again want to thank God that you have taken out the time to tune into this broadcast. I have a special guest. Yes, I do. A dynamic man of God. Amen. Apostle of the gospel. Amen. Thank God for the one and only Apostle Greg Davis. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming. Amen. Um, I want to talk about the Apostle for the 21st century. We have many, many, many um, have stated and said that they are Apostles mm -hmm. and and really don't know what it means or the cost of being an Apostle. So I wanted, I invited you on the show to try to define and try to help us assist uh, what it means to be a, an apostle, not only just the apostle, but the apostle of the 21st century. <laughs> Amen. The apostle of the 21st century, mm -hmm. because we are meeting, we have great challenges today, uh, things that are, we're saying things that goes against the word of God. What does it mean for the man of God um, to be an apostle? So what is expected for the apostle in this century, the 21st century? Well, well praise God. First of all, uh, thank you. That's a very uh, interesting question, Amen. but it's a question that should be asked. Yes, sir. Uh, most times uh, we have people that understand the, the apostolic persuasion mm -hmm. from a traditional standpoint, yes. from a traditional perspective. And oftentimes we allow the church to dictate or even create the, the view or the perspective of the apostle mm -hmm. when the apostle actually predated the church. Mm -hmm. and, and some of the criteria that God has for the apostle has nothing to do with the standard whereby the church is set for it, uh -huh. okay? And so, uh, well, number one, an apostle, first of all, who wants to be an apostle? <laughs> you know, I've, mm -hmm. I've almost had to lose my life right, to right. Uh, accept that call yes. and, and to walk um, uh, in that. It, it, it took something, you know, Glory. but I thank God that uh, the Lord knows how to fully persuade you yes, <laughs> yes. as it relates to your election and making it sure Amen. in your call. And so the apostle, especially as, it, well, let me just start here. God's original intent for mm -hmm. his apostle is number one, to glorify him. All right. Okay. Uh, there's a fine line between the false apostle and, and the authentic one. Oh, glory. Okay. Glory. And, and, and that line is simply this. The, both apostles, according to the word of the Lord, they, they will draw the masses. Mm -hmm. They will even work in signs and wonders. Right. They're, they're, there's a such thing as lying signs and wonders. Right. Which false apostles can appear yes, to, to release, do, okay? Yeah. Um, however, the difference between, or the, the, the drawing line it, between the false apostle and the authentic one is that the, the authentic one will, will give the people back to God. The false apostle will herd the people to themselves. Glory. Ooh. Yeah. And so that's what we have to be careful mm -hmm. to. Everything about the apostle has to direct people back to Christ. Mm -hmm. That's the key thing. That's the apostle's nature to mm -hmm. direct the people back to Christ. It's all about him. Right. It's not about building our matter of fact, there comes a time when the immature apostle. Yes. Now, all of them aren't, it, there's, all of them aren't phony and, 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 no, and fraudulent, but there's not. some who are very immature. Okay. And it's important that they get yoked mm -hmm. with a sober apostle uh -huh. or, or apostle that's been established mm -hmm. so that they can learn. You don't okay. just say that you're, you know, you don't right. just become this thing. Yes. You're going to have to learn this thing mm -hmm. um, through obedience and even through suffering. Glory. Because if you're going to walk as an apostle, suffering is ine inevitable. Oh, it's inevitable. So um, th there has to be someone in the midst that can stir the apostle, mm -hmm. that can steer the apostle mm -hmm. to make sure that they're not making blunders of things. Okay. And oftentimes um, 
if there's no pattern before you, you mm -hmm. actually are the pattern. Mm -hmm. If there's no pattern before you, you, you become that pattern. And uh, like Paul, uh, the word of the Lord says yeah. that God taught Paul personally. Oh, my okay? God. Yes. And, and so it's one thing to have no one to teach you, to yeah. instruct you. But it's another thing to sit under instructors. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's really the route we want to go. Right. Uh, there, there sometimes we, we end up in blunders because mm -hmm. we're not seated under someone that, okay. that can instruct us. So like any other uh, gift or ministry mm -hmm. gift, we have to mature. Right. That's true. Yeah. We have to mature. Mm -hmm. I do agree. Well, you could, because there are several apostles that are not sitting up under any leadership. Mm -hmm. You yourself, you, you, you have this fellowship. Mm -hmm. You state you are a planter. You, mm -hmm. you say you have about 25 in this country alone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, if a pastor doesn't have any covering, what does he need to do mm -hmm. um, other than contact you? What is the process that you will take him mm -hmm. through? Mm -hmm. as far as training wise. Well, well, first of all, Paul put it this way. He says, present yourselves to God and then unto me. Mm -hmm. Okay. There, there are some people that will come to others for a platform. Oh, and here's Lord. what we have to be careful about. Okay. Um, Paul said, present yourself to God, give yourselves over to God mm -hmm. and then unto me. Wow. Okay. Because it's all about Christ. And so if, if you're obedient to him, wow. you'll be, you'll, you'll yeah. align with, with me. You. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's not so much as about, man ruling over another man or wow. man having authority over another man. It's about servicing. It's about relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, leader shifting. Oh. Um, if, if someone says, Hey, you know what? The Lord has uh, called me and uh, I'm going to sit with you. We're going to walk together. We're mm -hmm. going to serve together. That's it. The proper term is undergirding. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we cover people and they can't go anywhere because we're covering them. Ooh, and so there has to be a divine undergirding. We're, we're to undergird individuals uh, and, and to release them into their ministry okay. gifts. True apostles will always train you mm -hmm. and really train themselves out of a job. Let me, let me put it this way. Oh, um, wow. I, I have to train you to a place where you don't need me. Glory. It, the, the more you can be de begin to do things the way you've seen me do it, but better, now yes. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Wow. Oftentimes, there are people that will, will try to keep you with them all your life. Jesus. But the fact of the matter is, uh, it's apostle's job to train, anoint, and release. Mm. We release you to your next dimension, your next phase of ministry. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, that doesn't mean being with us. Wow. Amen. So we have to be willing. To and so really apostles yeah. have to have a strong prophetic dynamic mm -hmm. within themselves to know when God is saying, OK, it's time for them to be released. Glory, glory, glory. Yeah. What process you know, as an apostle, mm -hmm. what process that you had to go to where you were you what training did you go through? Like um, me, for instance, I was a missionary before I was evangelist. What was the procedure you went through before you actual became the Apostle of your Amen. fellowship. <laughs> well, the 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 apostle is is not um, an appointed grace. Mm -hmm. He or she is an anointed grace. Okay. In other words, man can't make you one. Glory. You, God has to call you God from the before to. the foundation of the world. All right. Matter of fact, you, you have to attain that grace mm -hmm. before you come into the earth. Before you're born mm -hmm. of a woman. You've already been demarcated. God has already separated you. He said, Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, mm -hmm. I knew mm -hmm. you and I ordained you. you. I called you to be a prophet. Before you got here, right. it was already on you. Yes. That's, that has to, that's the grace that's applied to apostles and prophets. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it's another thing, you know, when you began the work and, and all of a sudden God is now bringing identity. You're, mm -hmm. you're finally you're understanding, okay, this is who I am. Right. Oftentimes he calls the apostle through a lot of hardship. Okay. I'll tell you how I know God called me to it. <laughs> um, it's almost as if folk will try to kill you. Oh, Jesus. It, yeah, it takes, Lord. it takes a, a grace because mm -hmm. so what God does with the apostle, he equips and prepares the apostle on the backside of the desert. Jesus. They, they 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 go through hard things mm -hmm. before God releases the, before God releases the mandate or the mantle, mm -hmm. they've already experienced it. And so before they get the title, they're already walking in it. Before the title was ever put on their put on their shoulders, before anybody says, "Hey, you're an apostle," they already have experienced the grace to walk in it. It, it, it mm -hmm. was done on the backside of the desert. The, the apostle is always the one 
um, they they get uh, beat down first. They they lied on first. They're, <laughs> they're talked about first. Amen. And oftentimes in the kingdom, and, and this is something that you know, I've, I've kind of taught on this series for a while now, most of the time it's the people in the kingdom that aren't doing anything that mm -hmm. has everything to say about the ones who are doing oh, something. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> and so that's, that, that, that can be something. It really could. But we learn how to love our persecutors. Okay, yeah. Apostles, prophets. Right. And, Have to. And, and even evangelists. Yes, and, and I say this to you, we, we sort of flow in that same dynamic mm -hmm. because the evangelist has to be one that produces signs and wonders. Right. Uh, the Lord began to deal with me about uh, when Christ... Um, when he at, after his ascension, he, he walked the earth, and the mm -hmm. word of the Lord said, with many infallible proofs, he showed himself after his passion with yeah. many infallible proofs. These are the things that we have to display, mm -hmm. infallible proofs. My it's Lord. in us. It's it, Nobody has to, if I have to tell you who I am, I'm not who I am. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, if you're discerning, if, if, if that's a gift that you have, uh, the moment I walk through the door, I don't have to say who I am. Mm -mm. You can discern it. You're right. Amen. Right. right and right. those are infallible proofs. And yes. so um, we have to be able to walk in that dimension, walk in that dynamic. Well, we don't have to say anything. Just watch us. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. To let your light so shine so that men may see Absolutely. your good yeah. works. Define the apostle as the strategist because he is, he is known as one. Can you, like... Lever on that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. A little bit. You know, the the one of the apostles' job is to strategically push the body of Christ into greater truths, greater revelation. It's it's our job to establish what's being revealed, mm -hmm. what's being spoken. Oftentimes, um, what we do is we we glean from the invisible realm. Right, right. Um, I believe that there's no such thing as an apostle without having a prophetic dimension. Mm. Every apostle has to have a prophetic dimension mm -hmm. uh, attached to them. Right. Yeah, because if if you if you don't have a prophetic dimension attached to you mm -hmm. as an apostle, you you can't you can't direct the body the way the body needs to go. Right. That's why in oftentimes when there's a ministry that's anchored by an apostle. That church, um, it's, it's, it's religion's worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. that, that church, religious people can't stay there. No. They can't stay no. there. They, they'll, they'll walk in and say, wait a minute, mm -hmm. I don't know what's going right. on. Because when, whenever the spirit of the oh, Lord yes. is, is prominent yes. inside of a house, Glory. Um, nothing's the same. Nothing. The sound, the song of mm -hmm. the Lord, it's not the same. No. No. Uh, the, the prophetic... Um, uh, ingenuity mm -hmm. it's not the same not. You, you you can walk in late and, and you don't know whether you're at the beginning or the end of the service mm -hmm. because it, the, the spirit is mm -hmm. so free mm -hmm. amen and so um, as apostles strategically we're to establish God's mindset okay. and, and here's what's been happening um, mo well not I'm not gonna say most but leaders have they they've actually been presenting Christ from a low level frequency. Jeez, that's true. Uh, see, mm -hmm. Christ, when he ascended, he mm -hmm. gave gifts unto men. Yeah. It's, so if we're going to know who he is, we've got to know him from an ascended place. Mm -hmm. If we want to know what's in his mind, what's on his thoughts, mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to get it from a, his place of ascension. Mm -hmm. his, his, how he's thinking from an ascended realm. Mm -hmm. right. So that we're accessing it. So that we're releasing it to the sons of okay. God. And so th this is the dynamic in which God is calling for. Right. Most times leaders are, they'll get up Sunday morning and they'll rehearse what they heard 30 years ago, Talk 40 about. years ago. Yes, and so they're not hearing. Jesus yeah. put it this way. He said, what I tell you in the ear, mm -hmm. that speak ye upon the mountain. It's a prophetic connotation. Mm -hmm. He's, he didn't say what, I, what you read. Mm -hmm. He said, what I tell you in, in your ear. ear. That's right. That's what you speak. Oh, and yes. so apostles, uh, our first readiness lesson is mm -hmm. revelation. Mm -hmm. And Paul went through something very, uh, very strategic because of the level of revelation. Glory. He said, because of the 
because of the abundance of revelation there was given to me a yes. thorn in the flesh no, a messenger yes. of satan yes. to buffet me yes. Be because of the revelation god was giving me he said satan came to oh, buffet me glory. to buff that word buffet means to strike repeatedly with a clenched fist oh. he kept buffeting me and then watch what paul says here he says i sought the lord concerning it three times he three said times. i asked him to remove it and the lord, lord says my grace is, is sufficient. sufficient my lord apostles flow in revelation Mm -hmm. but that revelation will cost us our very life oh man, man this is i'm, I'm being fed <laughs> i'm being fed i'm, I'm an Amen. evangelist <laughs> but i've been buffeted all that all that what you're uh -huh. saying is, mm -hmm. is is present now it's like now 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 mm -hmm. now amen amen <laughs> i just i just thank god because I'm, I'm thinking i'm just gonna do a regular interview but i'm being fed i'm being informed praise god from the throne amen. and i bless god for that mm -hmm. speak to me about the apostle being the planter Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, that's one of the that's that's one of the earmarks that that God challenges the apostle with. Paul said, he says, I'm careful not to not to build on another man's foundation. Mm -hmm. He says, I won't do that. He says, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to present God mm -hmm. with something new. I'm going to give him his own foundation and wherewith he can build, with it, he can work with, where things can be raised up. It's our job to train, to raise up leaders and, and position them, posture them. Okay? They're, they're not called to sit with us for 30 years, 40 years. They're not mm -hmm. called to do that. Mm -hmm. Most churches, they're people that have been sitting there for 20, 30, mm -hmm. 40 years. But it's, it's the call of the apostle is to raise up individuals mm -hmm and send them to do a greater work. Glory. And so it's that sending anointing, and that's probably what you're feeling right now. The, the evangelist has the sending anointing mm -hmm. as well. Right. Anytime we plan a ministry, we don't send the prophet first, we don't send the apostle first, we send the evangelist mm -hmm. in first. It's the evangelist that stirs the hearts of the people. Glory. The evangelist flows in signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. They have that sending grace. Mm -hmm. And so planting churches, it, it has to be done properly. But it, it takes a grace and it takes revelation. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. That's what we're known to do. And I've been persecuted, by the way, for I've sent people off to to start ministries. And my peers have said, what's wrong with you? You know, matter of fact, I've even been called a cult. You know, you don't you don't send your tithers away. Well, first of all, I don't have any tithers. They're not mine. They belong to him anyway. Right, OK. Right. And watch this. God never called them to sit with me and for me to babysit them for 20 and 30 years. Oh, they have ministry in their belly. Right. They've been called to the nations such as I. Mm. And we have to be able to release them and not be intimidated by it, but release them. Not only that, give them the resources that they need. Equip them. <laughs> and get them going. Oh Hallelujah. My God. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Jesus. Amen. Oh, mm -hmm. you, you stepping on some toes. Are you? It's tight, but it's right. It's tight, but it's right. Amen. Um, mm -hmm. The relationship that Paul had with uh, Timothy and mm -hmm. Titus, mm -hmm. as far as him being hit their uh, spiritual father mm -hmm. or leader. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Because you know, it's like similarity what you're saying now. Absolutely. So can, can you like correlate in a sense? Absolutely. Apostles are, the, we're, we're called to father sons in the gospel. Mm -hmm. And when I say sons, I mean male and female. Mm -hmm. There are no gender. Right, there's no gender. The, we're, yeah. we're, to, we're to father mm -hmm. sons. Right. Uh, in other words, they're, they're to take upon our DNA. Now, we, we all have one father, right. okay? However, um, the father gives authority to men in the earth mm -hmm. to duplicate the father son relationship in heaven okay okay and that's that's what apostles do we 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 raise sons that will go further than we've ever gone mm -hmm. we have to nurture them we have to provide for them we have to instruct them mm -hmm. we we and even discipline at times right. but First and foremost, they'll see our walk. Mm -hmm. As we walk upright, they'll walk upright. Right. And if and if a son can see you bowing before your father, right. they'll bow before. as well. Okay. And so this is a this is a dynamic. Now it takes longer to produce sons than it does disciples. Mm. Okay. There there are many people, there there are folk that will flock into a ministry, um, but they're not sons. They're, they're students. Some of them go in as students, but students don't get inheritances. No. 
Disciples don't get inheritance. Mm -hmm. Sons do. Yes, they you, do. You have to be a son mm -hmm. to get an inheritance. Right. You have to be a son to partake of a mantle. And so apostles' main job is not to just produce, mm -hmm. but we're, we're more moved by sons. Right. The sons, because we can deal with them. We right. could, we could, we have relationship with them. Mm -hmm. We trust one another. We can laugh. Yeah. It ain't got to be all serious no. all the time. We could. No. Sonship means absolutely everything. Wow. wow. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. Um, what do you say to that individual that knows he's called to be an apostle? That is going through what you stated you have gone through. What do you say to him or her? They know they got this calling. They know. What do you say? Because I, I knew somebody that went to somebody and said, I believe God has called me to be this. I, you know, mm -hmm. And the leader looked at him like they were crazy. Mm -hmm. What do you say there? Because this is going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That Absolutely. people, you know you got this great calling. You know, you know, you know. You go tell your leader and the leader doesn't accept. What do that individual do? Mm -hmm. How do they come out? How do they trust? How do they believe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate or just Absolutely. share? Uh, well, take David, for instance. He, he, he was a change agency. Right. David, David was a man that was getting ready to produce and manifest the mind of God okay. in such a way. But he was yet under Saulistic systems. He mm -hmm. was under Saul's governing, under Saul's government. And Saulistic systems will never allow a David. Wow. to do better mm. okay what Saul says is no if I can't do it you can't do it wait a minute I'm king here I'm gonna get the glory this is me it's all about me Ooh. and so there are David's right now that are in, under Saul's tutelage right now Saul will never anoint him Saul will never release him so and so God has to anoint David to run out of Saul's camp God has to anoint David to run out of Saul's camp. Now, here's the thing. Um, apostles have to find other established apostles mm -hmm. because you can run to the wrong person and they can't identify who you are. Mm -hmm. There has to be a prophetic grace upon them yes. that they can identify the grace, the mantle, the mandate that's on your life. And oftentimes, if you run into a carnal believer... A carnal believer, they'll look at your outward expression. They'll see you going through this. They'll go and they'll term it. Maybe it's some sin in your life or maybe you. And it has nothing to do with any of that. It's because God is ready to birth what's in them mm -hmm. out of them because he put it in there. He knows it's there. Right. He's ready to birth it. But the issue now is Saul says, uh, I can't let that come. I can't let that live. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the carnal believer says, um, because they can't see in the spirit realm, mm -hmm. the carnal believer says, well, it's because you're doing this and you're doing that. And, you, and, and so they don't understand the processing. And that's why it's important that apostles yoke with other apostles so that they can learn and understand. Wow. wow. Absolutely. So they can learn. And they can understand. I, I, I'm, I'm full. Amen. <laughs> I am Amen. full. Amen. I, I'm, I'm probably going to get in trouble with saying this, but a pastor can instruct an apostle. Okay. Uh, um, they're, they're <laughs> leaders, and I, I don't really want to start calling titles and, and positions. Right, right, right. But it takes, it takes apostolic insight mm -hmm. to raise the water level of apostolic insight. You, you're gonna, it takes an apostle to help refresh, create, instruct, build another apostle. Wow. Amen. Wow. Anything other than that, it'll, it, you'll just end up in trouble. Wow. 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 Where are you currently located, Apostle? Uh, first of all, I'm enjoying the flow here, Evangelist. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm just like, oh, my God. I'm like, wow, wow, wow. I'm just, Amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm just amazed because um, what you've said is something that I um, have experienced. Um, I have children, you know, they're not saved, mm -hmm. nor, nor is my husband saved, mm -hmm. but they got the gift of prophecy. Mm -hmm. and, and they would... You know, my husband would come to service with me and even my children come to service with me. And my oldest daughter came and told me one time, she says, Mom, you are around people who are jealous of where you're going. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, they got more than I have. Mm -hmm. She said, that doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. She said, they're just, she said, they see what you are. Mm -hmm. She said, and they're jealous where you're going. So it's, it's very, 
I'm glad you're touching on things mm -hmm. that I have gone through, and I, I don't claim to be no, you know, it's no farther than evangelism. Mm -hmm. I don't claim to be I no, I, I, mm -hmm. I stay where I'm at. I'm, I'm, I'm in my lane. Let uh -huh. me say it like this. Uh -huh. I stay mm -hmm. in my lane. And I've had people say, oh, you're an apostle. No, no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but this is very important. This is, you know, there should be some workshops or something mm -hmm. to, to really help build the body, help build not only just the apostle, but build the other parts, build the prophets, build this, Absolutely. because there are some of us who are really going, we're going through this right now. Mm -hmm. We're being persecuted, we're being talked about, we're being lied on, we're being laughed at mm -hmm. because we're different and yes. we're unique and we hear the voice of Absolutely. God. Absolutely. We hear Absolutely. God. I mean, I, when I get up, I literally hear him. And mm -hmm. sometimes I say, wait a minute, I don't want to do that. I don't, mm -hmm. don't want to say Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And I get it where he'll say, mm -hmm. say it. Mm -hmm. Even to the point where <clears throat> I was in a service one time, the Lord instructed me. I, was, I had a service at this particular particular church and the Lord told me he said I want you to ask people for $20 mm -hmm. I said I'm not going to ask them for $20 <laughs> Lord okay because they don't have it mm -hmm. he said ask the people for $20 I says no I'm not going to ask them for $20 because mm -hmm. they don't have it mm -hmm. six months later I was host of a conference and the leader of that congregation asked five people for $100 one of the persons she asked for $100 one of the persons who gave $100 was one of the persons I thought that didn't have $20. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So it's very important that uh -huh. we hear the Absolutely. voice of God in every aspect, uh -huh. even when it comes to offering time in anything. So I'm, I'm glad you're speaking on revelation. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad this is, I'm just full. I'm just full. Amen. Um, <laughs> I'm full. Hallelujah. Um, okay, we talked about the strategist. Mm -hmm. We talked about the planter. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's talk about the apostle when he holds uh, more than when he's the pastor. How does he how does he hold all those roles? Mm -hmm. Because he's a mm -hmm. pastor as well. Amen. How are you Amen. holding it? Let Amen. me say it like Praise that. God. The apostle has to have pastors with him. See, oftentimes if, if the the apostle comes away from the apostolic role, okay. he, he, he can actually he or she can actually open themselves up for attack. OK. See, if, if the apostle, Peter, Peter put it this way, he says, you know, we can't stop what we're doing and fasting and praying and wait tables. He says, we can't do this. He talked about an act when there was a murmur, there was a, it was a murmuring and there was a disagreement uh, with the widow. Some were saying we were being neglected, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And so Peter said, we can't stop what we're doing to wait mm -hmm. tables. Mm -hmm. And so he chose out men to begin to uh, do the work as it relates to that house. And so apostles have to be yoked with pastors. Pastors have to come and the apostle gives the pastor okay. the, the authority to literally pastor the flock. Okay. okay? They deal with the, when things happen, you okay. know, all right, go, because if it's not, if the pastor can't handle it, then of course they'll relay it to the apostle. Okay. But the apostle has to have pastors in the midst of them that could actually carry the house with or without them. Okay. Okay, I've, 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 I've truly, 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 I mean, I really, from the, I really enjoy this. <laughs> Listen, you. I thank God that all of you have tuned into this broadcast. If you are, you're welcome to go to his services. His, his number is located on the screen. You have any questions, any concerns, any interest of attending his ministry, or if you want him to come and train or come and do a revival, the number is on the screen. Thank God for all of you till we meet again.